The Capo and Joe podcast is brought to you by Bold City Heating and Air. Fast and reliable AC service. Welcome in, Campo and Joe, fired up to be here on a Tuesday. Our podcast available on Facebook Live, so if you are tuning in, we appreciate it. And then if you download us, wherever you find us, we always appreciate you listening. Josie from XL Primetime, our head coach, Dave Campo, as we crank it out. And I tell you what, Coach, the bye week comes at a good time, but it comes at a great time coming off a five-game win streak for your for your Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, uh, that was a tremendous victory up at, at Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, they fought through the New Orleans game, and mm-hmm. and we were fortunate to win that game. Yeah, but they played well against Pittsburgh, and that's a tough place to play. And uh, you know, I've been there many times, and, and Jacksonville's been pretty successful in there. Mm-hmm. It's become a little bit of a rivalry. I, I got a little nervous when when Dewey started uh, swinging that towel around. The game wasn't quite <laughs> over at that point. I got a little nervous. Yeah. But more power to them. Hey, uh, when you got it, flaunt it. Right. And when you make plays, you go let them know that you just made a play. Don't talk before, talk after, which we'll definitely get into that theme as well uh, with this uh, Jaguars-Pittsburgh game. You know, the thing is, more than anything else, is that this football team has come together at the right time, and they've weathered a pretty big storm schedule-wise. And I do think there's a school of thought out there that they might cool off during the bye week, but Let's just deal with that a little bit later on. Let's just look at what it took to get here, Coach. And I always like to point to the experience that Coach Campo has. Six and two. This team has not had that record since Leon Searcy was playing right right tackle and Big Bo Hall of Famer was playing, Tony Baselli playing left tackle, Brunel, all the other guys. Not since 1999. Has this team been six and two? And not since you were an assistant coach on the defensive side of the football here, has this football team been in this position trying to make a playoff run? Correct. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've got to be uh, ecstatic in the media mm-hmm. because obviously it's more fun when you win. Yeah. In, in, in your business, our business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the fans, it's fantastic because you have so much to look forward to. And, you know, you win out in October. That's nice. And, yeah. and here we go. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm excited for our guys. I think you're right that the bye week comes at the right time. Mm-hmm. You know, halfway through the season, that's the perfect time to have it. You, you heal up a little bit yeah. and then make your run. Yeah, and that's what they're hoping. They're hoping they're playing more than just the second half of the season, that they're playing well into the playoffs. And so not having a bye week coming back from London and then having back-to-back road games. Let's not forget that. Against New Orleans, yeah, you got a little bit of a rest after that Thursday night game. But you went into Pittsburgh, another angry fan base, and you came out and made them angrier because you beat their butts. And that was massive. It's not easy. And you you – Tell everybody, it ain't easy. I don't care how bad Pittsburgh was offensively. It is not easy to win on the road. No, and and especially when uh, you go into a hostile environment mm-hmm. like like Pittsburgh and New Orleans. Uh, yeah. You know, everybody, uh, your your offensive linemen have to perform better than they do at home yeah. because of the crowd noise. You know that gives the defense an opportunity to do some things that that uh, you know they shouldn't be able to do. Mm-hmm. And our offensive line has handled both situations very well. Well, <laughs> I'm looking at the trade deadline now, and I'm going to pose this question to you. We might as well do it right now, uh, and then we'll get back to the game. They have blocked well these past couple of games. Against a decent Saints defense. Let's not dismiss that bunch. Right. Cam Jordan and company, pretty good, even though Cam may not be enjoying the year that we're used to seeing him enjoy. Then they get TJ, basically Watt and Highsmith on both sides of that Pittsburgh front. Yes, they got to Trevor a couple of times. Yes, they popped the ball out, forced a couple turnovers. But by and large, this offensive line did a pretty good job. Absolutely. Uh, I think they've improved week to week. Uh, and then, of course, the trade deadline today, they just picked up another interior lineman, mm-hmm. which I think is really good with the idea that, you know, Shotley has done a wonderful job. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I, he's one of the most valuable guys on the team, in my opinion. Uh, if this Ezra Cleveland can come in, Rousha coached him at Minnesota, so he knows him. Yeah, and that makes the transition a little easier. 
Uh, but, you know, you've got a, a, an older guy in sheriff at mm -hmm. the one guard. So, you know, the trade deadline is based, Joe, as you know, mm -hmm. it's not always the splash trade. It's the it's what can we do realistically to make the team better? Yeah. And I think they did that with that trade uh, that would happen today. And so you're tuning in. You're either watching this on Facebook Live or you're catching this podcast later and you're finding out what all these uh, uh, trades uh, that came before the deadline, 4 o'clock this afternoon, how they're going to impact each team. Well, Ezra Cleveland is a guy that you may not know 100% about uh, what he's been able to do up there, but he is a fairly high draft pick, former second rounder up there. You do have to ask the question, why are they dealing him if he's still on his first contract? Well, Phil Rauscher was a guy who probably said, this is a guy I think we can use. Kirk Cousins just goes down with an injury. You don't quite know where the Minnesota Vikings are heading. It's not like this was an expensive piece for them, but it's a piece that Jacksonville needs. And at least as far as the reporting goes, they give up a six-round pick. That's Okay. I think that's a win for us, especially mm -hmm. if the kid comes in and does what we think he can do. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the guy's had a lot of starts now, forty nine mm -hmm. starts in the league. So this isn't a guy that you know coming in, in that uh, is was a backup player. This guy's a good player. Right now, th they have their reasons for making a trade. Mm -hmm. Well, we have our reasons for making a trade, and I think right now you'd have to say we feel pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you take a look, 25 years of age, three-year starter at Boise State before he came uh, into the National Football League. They picked him midway through the second round, and we're going back to 2020. And so last year of his rookie contract, they can look at him and evaluate him. Now, this came out of necessity for Jacksonville, so let's get to the other half of this. Ben Barch has been released. So... Barch is a guy that battled through a fairly severe knee injury, worked his tail off, got injured about this time last year. I want to say it was October 26th right. when he went down with the injury, was able to get back within about a 10-month time frame, started in the preseason. He earned his job back as the starting left guard, but then he did not hold up in real game situation. And think about this, Coach. You go out there, you play 10, 20, however many plays in the preseason. Then you hit the showers. You come into a regular game, you're playing 60 plays, and that knee apparently did not did not hold up. Yeah, and I feel bad for the young man because, uh, you know, he was a guy coming from a small school that had really shown some things. And, and you know, obvious, it's obvious to me that part of the issue with him is his health. Mm -hmm. It's not just his ability to play, but I think – when he came back, he probably was not 100%. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure he lost a little confidence. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they felt that uh, it was, you know, they had to go with Shatley with a little more experience. And especially with a young center, you know, you want some guys sure. around you with a little bit of experience. And obviously, Sheriff has it. And Shatley had it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think... Uh, he, I'm hopeful that Barch will be able to catch on somewhere else. But, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you get a bad injury. That's unfortunately, it's the NFL not for long. No, it, it, it's a, a brutally honest sport when it comes to what you have or what you don't have. And he's a guy that had it, was a starter, and now through injury or confidence has lost some of that. And it's unfortunate. Now, when we take a look at this, Walker Little. I immediately thought of Walker Little when this news came down. I looked at you. I looked at Matt Hayes while we're doing our show. And I think to myself, Walker Little was already exposed inside at the guard spot. He immediately got hurt. Uh, it was a serious enough knee injury to keep him out the last couple of games. He was cleared to play this past week, but he didn't play in that guard spot. They kept Tyler Shatley in there. Now they're going to move Ezra Cleveland in there, you would expect. That, to me, says Walker Little is a precious commodity, and we're not putting him back inside. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I felt right along that, and a lot of people did, not just me, mm -hmm. that he wasn't a, a great fit at guard. All right. You know, he's a, he's a lanky athlete, great feet, not necessarily a power player. Mm -hmm. We even talked about the fact that we weren't sure, you know, left tackle to right tackle. Yeah. True. You know, from a power standpoint, because the right tackle is a little bit more of a, 
a power position. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think they improved the uh, offensive line a ton if, if Ezra Cleveland is who we, they think he is mm -hmm. and we think he is. Mm -hmm. uh, because now you've got a quality backup in Shatley if Ezra Cleveland comes in. Or if Ezra Cleveland doesn't come in, you've got a quality backup in Ezra Cleveland. True. Right. And then you've got uh, three tackles that can play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that position is uh, such out there that, that uh, you know, you got to have good three good players there mm -hmm. in my f mind. So they've got two backups that are pretty darn good football players. And Shatley is not only a backup at guard, but he's also a backup at center. True. Which, which you know, is really a plus for our football team. Yeah, because you don't quite know where Walker Little will be. He could be your swing. Like you said, there could be other – decisions that are being made there. Now you have quality interior line depth, quality uh, outside tackle depth, and you're going to go from there. Now, we mentioned Chase Young. The San Francisco 49ers have dealt for him. He is, I would say, probably the marquee guy right now before the trade deadline hits. He is moving from Washington, along with Montez Sweat, who already was dealt out of Washington. He goes to San Francisco, the next team that Jacksonville is going to see coming into Duval. So how about this? Mention the line and who they're going to have to block. The 49ers defensive line now includes Nick Bosa, Chase Young, Javon Hargrove, Eric Armstead, Drake Jackson, Randy Gregory, Javon Kenlaw. That's a pretty good group. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good group. Uh, but now what did... Uh, Clue me in. What, mm -hmm. what did they uh, spend for uh, Jason? third round draft pick? Yeah, when I was when we were at break and on the prime time show, mm -hmm. uh, I made a comment to Matt Hayes. I said, "I'm surprised that we aren't interested in a guy like Chase Young or Uche." Mm -hmm. From yeah. I'm thinking, you know, we can get him at a premium. Well, a third rounder is not a premium. And that's how important pass rushes are in this league. Yes, you that a guy that's it. been injured, now he does have five sacks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he is a, a quality football player, but I didn't think he would go for a third round pick, but I was wrong. And the other thing is, is at least the way the details have unfolded here, is that if they were to lose him to free agency and they gave up that third round pick, they're entitled to compensatory picks. The Campo and Joe podcast is brought to you by Bold City Heating and Air. Fast and reliable AC service. They would turn right around and probably re-earn their third round pick. Right. So that's interesting as well on give John Lynch credit, whomever right. pulled the deal out well, in San Francisco. We also have an issue with uh, Ridley next year, right? Not the ability not to use that third round. That's pick. it. So, you know, there, there's reasons why things don't happen. But I, I, again, I'll say it again. The trade led deadline is based on improving your football team. Mm -hmm. If you do that, it may not be a, a splash pick. Just like maybe some of the draft picks aren't splash picks. You can't say that Harrison was a splash pick mm -hmm. with the first pick in the draft, and yet he's improving week to week uh, to the point where a year from now, two mm -hmm. years from now, you'll be able to leave anybody on him one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and, and here's another one from Adam Schefter, just as far as the way the compensatory works, is that the 49ers are already projected to get a compensatory third round for Mike McGlinchey, the offensive tackle. Another third round pick uh, for the losses of Rand Carthon and D'Amico Ryans because Rand Carthon went into a front office. Right. D'Amico went on to a, a head coaching position. Holy smokes. Yeah. Well, they're a good uh, organization. And, and uh, you know, that's how the organizations work. Savages. All right. Yeah. Let's uh, let's move back to the Pittsburgh game. Talk a little bit about that because some good things came out of this coach. And this is a, a football game that was 20 to 10. The final, you say, all right, you doubled up your opponent on the road. You won by double digits, but you only got in the end zone once. So let's talk about that as far as the offense goes. And then we'll get to what Pittsburgh couldn't do because they only got in the, uh, into the end zone once as well. But the turnovers, definitely a little concerning. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't turn the ball over. We were fortunate. Uh, you know, we lost the turnover battle. But, uh, you know, usually that doesn't bode well for you. Right. But when you looked at that game, 
we controlled the football game for the majority of the game. Mm-hmm. You know, we, you know, you know, in this winning streak, we have not been behind at any point. Led against any Atlanta, game. led against Buffalo, led against Indy, led against New Orleans. Against, okay, uh, so you know, uh, so we controlled the game. We did not do as well as we needed to do in the red zone, mm-hmm. and that's something that you work on during the bye week. Right, same kind of thing. You know, uh, and they've been pretty good in the red zone. So, hopefully, uh, we'll we'll gain something here in the, in the bye week. But uh, the key to winning games, in my opinion, you always you hear me say it a hundred times: is four or five plays during the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, two of the biggest plays in the game were in situations where we had to have them. Mm-hmm. We, we needed a field goal. Okay, to go up two scores. And what does Evan Ingram do? He catches the ball and goes about 34 yards. Huge play. Yeah, for you know, right after a penalty, mm-hmm. he goes 34 yards and in the in the field goal range, and they kick the field goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So those kind of plays are the are the plays that make the difference in the football game. And we just you know we need to finish drives better, mm-hmm. and that's that's what we have to do going forward. Yeah, because that's the thing that frustrates you a little bit. The play that Evan Ingram will get the knock on is it it was a, a nice little gadget play. It's an inside shovel pass. You say shovel or you say shuttle? Shovel. Okay, I'm just making You're shoveling sure. them the ball. I want to make sure that we're we're right here. It's right? like a pass, but it's not a pass. It's a, a shovel. shovel pass because <laughs> I've heard people say shuttle as well. I want to I wanted to get coach on that one. Yeah. So you got the nice little clean gadget play. And it was cleanly tossed to Evan Ingram. He got his mitts on it, turns up. That linebacker put his helmet and shoulder right on it, popped the ball out. Anyway, that was inside the Steelers' 20-yard line. Then you have the Trevor Lawrence turnover where he throws it. Just an ill-advised decision. I think we all know that. I think Trevor knows that as well. Um, Those were the two worst. Now, we'll get to the Tank Bigsby fumble here in a second. But those are the two that not only cost you points, you give the ball to them, and then they've got a chance to change the fortunes yeah. for themselves. Yeah, and and you look at big plays, you know, on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, Dewey's interception mm-hmm. is what the other, the second big play, right. one before the other. He intercepts the ball, mm-hmm. which puts him into position, and... We get the ball and we hit Ingram for the big play mm-hmm. and we kick the field goal yeah. and all of a sudden it's a two point game. Let me tell you something. Seventeen to ten, right, is not safe. Mm-hmm. Never, never. Right. Now, twenty to ten, you feel a little bit better in the fourth quarter. And I'm right. talking from listen. I was the worst. Yeah, I, I can remember yelling in the press box, "Take the field goal! Take the field goal! Get me up more than eight. Yeah. Get me up more than eight. Yeah, I don't blame you. You know, and that's what they're looking at. And the Steelers have a way of taking advantage and making games up. Yeah, that's what like they that. did. That's what they how how they won that three mm-hmm. game win streak. Yeah. They won at the end of the yeah, ball by the way, game. They were four and oh when scoring seventeen points. That shows you how little they were doing offensively and how good their defense or special teams was right. to make sure that they stayed in those games. Uh obviously they only scored ten in this one. They lost Kenny Pickett at the half. Mitch Trubisky comes in. Not very good quarterback play from either one of those. In fact, they only had 100 yards in the first half of this offense. And then Trubisky made one or two good plays, but he also made one or two really big mistakes. Well, well, and we're digging those two guys, but mm-hmm. when you cannot run the ball, oh my gosh, yeah. and you have to throw the ball 43 to 50 times in a game, mm-hmm. you're not going to win a lot of games. No. I, I, I believe that. Uh, you know, and, and everybody says, oh, this is a passing league now and all that. But when you're one dimensional, mm-hmm. it's it's a whole different ball game for the defense. And our defense is playing lights out against the run. Yeah, and and a lot of that is the guy that everybody kind of gets after, uh, Walker, mm-hmm. Trayvon Walker. Mm-hmm. He's part of that run defense. Yeah, and Lloyd is playing much better than a year he did a year ago. So 
as long as we can make a team one-dimensional, right. we're going to win a lot of football games. It's very simple to Let's me. Let's stay on the defensive side. We'll get back to the offense here in a second. But uh, what I love about Mike Caldwell in his second year as a defensive coordinator, he's learned some things. He's found out some things. He's positionally putting these guys uh, in a much better spot. And they're playing free. They're not thinking as much. Right. Confidence uh, is king in these situations. You mentioned Devin Lloyd. And just the fact that he's playing better, how much better does he make guys around him? Because oh, they're not having to worry absolutely. about Absolutely. Aluakan, especially. You know, Aluakan played well last year, but mm-hmm. half the time he was worried about what Devin Lloyd or Mumo or whoever, mm-hmm. you know, was in there. What are they doing? You right. know, and that takes away from your play. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, I tell you what, Aluakan made a play in the game. They, they, they got outside. And he came flying across. That guy is playing full speed all the time. I love that guy. Ground. If he doesn't go to the Pro Bowl this year, he never will. Yeah. But back to Lloyd. Lloyd's, mm-hmm. you know, supporting where he's supposed to support. He's not making a lot of gap mistakes, which he did a bunch last year. That's almost mm-hmm. worse than right. some of the past stuff. That's really important to but stress here. Plus, they're playing enough man to man in when they have to. Mm-hmm. But the tackling and the pass offs. For the linebackers are a hundred percent better this year than they were were a year ago. Mm-hmm. This defense can tackle, so in the zone defenses, they're not giving up big plays, mm-hmm. which you get a little bit more in man coverage. Mm-hmm. But they're not giving up big plays. Although that first one down the middle, oh, it could have been over the, really bad. That could have started yeah. off the game poorly. Deontay Johnson had his hands on that ball. Yeah, that was a tough one right yeah. there. You know, but they caught him on a play action mm-hmm. right away. But uh, they're playing, you know, no big plays, and they're tackling really well. They're letting the ball go. You know, they're catching the ball up front. The pre- That allows the pressure to get there a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel good about that defense. I think Caldwell is they're, – they're, they're able to double cover when they have to. Mm-hmm. You know, Pickens a year – a week ago and – or excuse me, in that mm-hmm. game, Pickens mm-hmm. only had one catch. Yeah, because touchdown catch. George did have the touchdown. Yeah. And he's the one who – Talked about Jaguars having a hope defense. Yeah, right. Exactly. So uh, they're playing very well right yeah. now. Now, the next team they see, and we'll do a breakdown of this game next week, but that's a whole different animal. Okay, that's a San Francisco 49er team that is loaded. Okay, they've got the tight end. They've got the receiving game. They've got the running back. They've got multiple running backs. They've got an accurate and uh, a heady quarterback, even though Brock Purdy is – kind of been brought back down to earth a little bit he still is a damn good quarterback and so the next offensive machine that they will see will be entirely different they got a bone up for that one yeah absolutely this will be a tough ball game it's at home i like Mm -hmm. that you Mm -hmm. know even though we haven't played as well at home as we Mm -hmm. have on the road but if we're going to be if we're going to be what we think we're going to be we have to win some home games here and uh, having them here have them cross come across the country Mm -hmm. to, to be here uh, that's not that's not easy for them either. And, uh, and, and a 10 a.m. 10 a. kick for them, yeah, is a different different yeah. deal. That's yeah. not that not that easy for them. So, uh, you know, three or four weeks ago, we were saying that San Francisco was the best team in the NFC. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure they are yeah. anymore. Yeah. Uh, Purdy still threw for 300 yards, oh, yeah. Yeah. but he made mistakes. Yeah. And so, you know, they didn't have Demo Samuel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, we're going to have our hands full. And, but, and I, but this defense has proven that they can play against anybody. Yeah, the team that they played is also cresting up at the right time. The Cincinnati Bengals, right. really good defense, probably an underappreciated defense. Uh, and Joe Burrow starting to play at a, at a good clip. But to pull these two things together, that defense frustrated Brock Purdy, can this defense frustrate Brock yeah, Purdy? I think That's they can. I think they can. I don't know that, uh, you know, we'll have to see. Mm-hmm. But we can't let them control the football on us either. Yeah. Oh, and that's yeah. kind of their game. Yeah. You know, we've got to stop the run. We've got to make him make plays. Mm-hmm. They do have some quality guys, you know, that can make plays. Oh, yeah. So it's not going to be an easy ball game. But I believe if we play to our capabilities, we can play with anybody in the league. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's... You know, you can mention us with the Kansas City Chiefs yeah. and the Bengals and whoever you, the well, Buffalo Bills and, you know, the San Francisco, mm-hmm. whatever. After after the Chiefs lost the game last week to Denver, ending that 13 or 14 game division streak, uh, anything is possible because the Broncos stink and they made 
Kansas City and and, and uh, not 100% Pat Mahomes. He was dealing with the flu. Anyway, they made them look ordinary. And then we'll see what they do against the Dolphins in Germany. You may be looking at Jacksonville tied at the top of the AFC with either one of those teams, not Absolutely. both of them. One of them's going to go. Yeah, exactly. And so that, that's, a, that's a fun thing to look forward to. All right, real quick before we wrap up our show, self-scouting this week. How important is it and, and how much better will they be coming out of an off week where they study themselves? Well, first of all, you know, that's where you tweak what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at the things that you're doing well. Uh, you know, and you tweak those even, you know, you might uh, be getting something out of a certain motion or whatever. Well, you just run the same play with a different motion. Mm -hmm. Same thing defensively, you know, teams are are looking at you, uh, at what you're doing in key situations. Are you you playing zone? Are you rolling one way or another? I think the one thing the defense is doing now, they're showing three deep and going to two deep. Mm -hmm. That When they can do that, you know you're 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 making it tough on the on the offense. Right. So self scouting yourself is really important, and that's what happens during the bye week. And you actually have, although they have a bye week as well, but right. you They're actually doing... get well, and you also have an, an extra really three days: Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, mm-hmm. to get ready for the for the next opponent. So mm-hmm. you know you hope that you can. Tweak a few things, run the same plays with a little different motion, a little mm-hmm. different shift or whatever it is. Uh, that's what you do in the bye week. Well, right now, you're living right as a Jacksonville Jaguar fan. This time a year ago, I always like to give your perspective as we wrap it up. We were doing a podcast, probably Halloween time last year, saying this team may never win another game. Right, exactly. They were O for October. Right. And now they're 5-0. and o. In October. Absolutely. So it just tells you how much better this football team is. The expectations have gone way up, which is what you want. Uh, and this football team's got a chance to do something they haven't done in a long, long time. And that's get back into that position again to win the NFC or AFC South. So we'll see where it goes. Coach, as always, great podcast. We look forward to it. Let's hit our bottle let's hit heads. It forward. Because we are With winners, win. man. We are winners. We enjoyed that win. Let's see if there's more ahead, and we'll talk to you next week. Enjoy Halloween, guys. This presentation of the Campo and Joe podcast is brought to you by Bold City Heating and Air, faster, reliable AC service.